Shane, that right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember you a couple weeks ago, back at the hotel. We bring you up to see Major Hackett. Floyd and me. That's right. You, uh, signed up with us now, huh? Yeah. What kept you? I had business to take care of. Private business. And well, I ain't prying. You missed a lot of fun, is all. I heard. Listen, you ain't heard nothing like that tough old lady cuss before we strung her up. <laughs> you ought to been there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeff. You got a new fish in the barrel. Jed, I said we got a new fish in the barrel. I seen him. Ain't that the fellow that you met at the Stockman Hotel once? Shane? Mm-hmm. You sort of had a difference of opinion with him, didn't you? Ain't he the same fellow who laid you out across that supper table right in front of them two women? Yeah, you remember that, don't you, Jeff? What are you doing here, mister? Hired on. Who says? Major Hackett. Well, he's wrong, because you ain't staying. You pack your roll and get. You hear me, mister? Haven't we... haven't we met someplace before? I should have spilled your liver all over that fancy white tablecloth. You try it now. Draw on me. Go ahead, draw on me. Which half do you want me to draw? Is he a friend of yours? I hired on here to do a job for Major Hackett. Why don't you get him off my back, huh? He know you, Shane. I know him. You're gonna have to meet him head on sooner or later. Fact? Gospel. Well, in that case... Discharged. Throw him in an alley somewhere. There will be no further lapses of discipline under my command. Is that clear? There's no time for brawling. The campaign will begin tomorrow at dawn.
Joey, now put your chin under there. Now hold that. Now you hold that. Now let me see. Hold on to it, Joey. One, two. I bet it's gonna itch. No, it's not gonna itch. I bet Shane isn't wearing Joey! <laughs> Mr. Starrett, I want to talk to you. All right, Joey, now let's try this. Here the Cheyenne newspaper. Now let me see. Here she comes. I guess back. you know Major Hackett's riding off. How does the coat feel, Joey? He's going to clean out every Joey. rustler from here to the border. Joey, please, pay attention now. You can wear this coat for school this winter. Let me see how it is under the arms. You're a stubborn woman, Miss Starrett. <laughs> so is Longhorn Jenny, and they hanged her to her own gatepost. Pow! Pow! Joey. Now look at here, Miss Starrett. Pew, pew. Pew. Joey! Now, will you stand still? I like to fight for my own. I don't believe in killing for pleasure. Joey! Miss Starrett, I wouldn't like to come by your place one day and find it burned down. The old man hanged and a young woman like you... Well, shot quick if she's lucky. All right, Joey, take this coat off and we'll try on another one. Miss Starrett, if you cared one bit about that boy, you'd clear out. Are you trying to frighten me off of my property? That army's on the march, Miss Starrett. You rustlers and homesteaders are finished. Myself, he's so poor. With your luck, you ought to play cards. <laughs> That's hot. Well, they had to boil it to kill it. Looky there. He sure does all right for himself. Mother's little darling. Yeah. I'll wager your mother raised him on rattlesnake milk, huh? <laughs> Wake me early, Mother. For tomorrow I shall be Queen of the May. Are you done? You know where they make the best beans? Pecos jail. They put in chili peppers, all kinds of things. Hey, you ever been that Pecos jail, Shane? No, that's what I missed. Too bad. Best beans I ever ate. Shane, what are you doing? Just walking. Couldn't sleep. No more can I. Come in. Come in. You may sit down on the cot. How much schooling have you had? If I can read and write. But no higher mathematics. Uh, Euclid, uh, trigonometry, binomial theorem? No. How about languages? French, Latin, Greek? 
I can get along in Spanish, or Cree, so shown. Mm -hmm. And yet you're an intelligent man of, uh, of ability. I have observed that. You are, sir, a cut above the uh, low-grade Janissaries I have assembled. I don't know about that. You got some pretty good men with a gun. Yeah. Condottieri assassins. When you hire men to kill old women, you're gonna have to expect to get some rough ones. You disapprove, Shane? Do you affect moral scruples? If I did, I wouldn't be here. Job's a job. Ah, but this is more. Had you the education, you might understand. Mathematics to grasp the beauty of trajectory, the placing of field artillery, the parabola of a Congrave rocket and its modern descendants, or French, to read the memoirs of Napoleon's generals, or Greek. Here. Can you read this? No. That, sir, is the Anabasis by Xenophon, the uh, uh, downcoming or the march to the sea. 10,000 Greeks, hired by the emperor of the Persians and then left abandoned, marooned in the midst of hostile countries, surrounded by hordes of implacable Asiatics. And they cut their way over the mountains, out marching, out generaling the enemy. You figure hanging Longhorn Jenny, maybe burning out some rustlers, is like fighting the Persians? The principle is the same, sir. Here. I will have it all here. Some notes on a campaign in the northern Wyoming Territory with maps and photographs by Major George G. Hackett. It will be published in three volumes, bound in calfskin, a uh, special edition signed by the author with the maps and photographs reproduced by steel engravings. It will be studied, sir, at the General Staff School in Prussia, at Saint-Cyr in France, and at West Point. You seem pretty certain of your glory. I am. I was 24 when I led my first regiment into the attack. I was certain of my glory then, Shane, absolutely certain. And it came, it has always come to me. You see, I, I'm a genius. You must grant me that. Must I? Oh, yes. Come here. You see this weapon? I mean, you know what it is that you see. Well, I doubt it, really. But you are, my dear sir, looking at the weapon that will change warfare forever. The ancient and uh, decaying military minds of our generation fail to see it. They still think in terms of waves of men attacking frontally, but this weapon, as I shall prove on this campaign, will make that concept tantamount to mass suicide. You see, therein lies my genius and my glory. I am proving a whole new concept of military science. You know, Major, maybe I could, uh, maybe I could help you out. If you let me see those plans, I know the country in the North Valley is pretty well. My dear sir, in the 10,000, there can be but one Xenophon. I keep my own counsel. Sure. I guess that's best. I thank you, sir, for looking at me with what appears to be a light of intelligence in your eyes. However counterfeit that may be, you are dismissed. I, uh... I'm issuing orders in the morning for our next engagement. We shall attack the ranch of a man named Bullhead O'Reilly. Do you know him? No. I see. I'm assigning you to scout the terrain for us. You'll leave before first light. in your time, mister. All I got is maybe 80 cents cash money and a gold-filled watch that don't run. In about 10 minutes, a man named Hackett's gonna come in here with an army of gunfighters and hang you for a rustler. A rustler? Uh, you're out of your head. Hey, no, don't I... jaw me, O'Reilly. You heard about Longhorn Jenny? Yeah, but that's different. I'm no rustler. I run a straight stock outfit here. Well, if you're not a member of the Cattlemen's Benevolent and you're brand mavericks, now, come on, let's get going. Well, there ain't nobody gonna run me off my own place without I them some sort burn you out anyway. And if they don't shoot you, they'll hang you from your own gatepost like they did Jenny. Well, how do you know? Say, say, who are you anyway? I work for Hackett, and I know. Wait, well, well, then why are you here giving me warning like this? If you keep on talking, you're going to get us both killed. Come on, get out of here. Well, well, I got my pants hanging on the line out front. I got a... Come on! You got a string of horses? Yeah. Upper Box Canyon, about a mile from here. All right, you go up there and you get on one. You cut north to Roof Riker's place. And don't circle back because they'll catch you. And what are you waiting for? Well, 
Well, I can't go riding over the open country in this one-piece combination, no, can I? Look, if you don't get out of here in one minute, I'm going to save my neck by blowing your head off. All right. But I got to put my boots on first. This is some kind of joke. No, no, I, I guess maybe it isn't. Man. I must say grace. No! It's impossible. There's no composition, can't you see that? Composition? Of course. What good is a photograph of a burning building without a body? There should be a body. Sorry, Major. He was gone when I got there. Was he? Strange, isn't it? This is the first one to get away from me, the very first. Well, some days are like that. Your wit, sir, leaves a great deal to be desired. You are dismissed. I want you to keep an eye on that man, do you hear? Yes, sir, Major. I heard down at Grafton's this morning. There's a fellow named O'Reilly. But he got away just before they burned out his place. He's over at Roof Rackers now. How'd he get away, Harvey? I don't know. Didn't hear. But the uh, reason I dropped by was I... I thought you'd want to know about Shane. What about Shane? Uh, one of Riker's men said O'Reilly had seen Shane and Riker recognized him from the description. You didn't speak to O'Reilly, did you? No. And it could have been another man. Oh, no man, no man. They're sure, they're sure. Well, Harvey, what did he say about Shane? I don't know. I didn't talk to him. All the time, though, is Shane has joined up with them killers. And you thought I'd want to know badly enough you rode five miles out of your way to tell me? Well, I, I just, just thought you ought to know. I appreciate your kindly thought, Harvey Ball. the least I could do. Good night, sir. What did he say about Shane? Joey, why aren't you ready for bed? He said Shane joined up with the killers. Isn't that what he said, Grandpa? Yeah, that's what he said, boy. Joey, go to bed. Is it true, Mom? I don't know. I just don't know. But, Mom... Joey, will you go to bed? Well, I bet she's planning something. That's what I bet. He's planning something. You don't know Shane like I do, Mom. you some grub. <sighs> Must be a half mile back that camp. Beans most likely cold by now. That figures. <laughs> you want him? Well, I don't mind if I do. 
Ah, crazy. You're making two fellas stay way up here all night long. It's called a picket line. They have them in all the stylish wars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you sure you don't want no beans? You know, you missed uh, Hackett's speech today. Yes, sir. He stood up on that land out and he jawed away like it was the 4th of July. <laughs> what about? Well, I don't know. Some old Greek. <laughs> I never knew no Greeks. Except this uh, corporal once in the detention barracks in Leavenworth. Anyway, he, uh, he told us where we're going tomorrow. Yeah? Where? Up through Boyle Pass, down in the Creek Valley. You've been through them parts, ain't you? Yeah. Yeah, I stayed there for a while. We're gonna go through there like a band of Huns, whatever that is. Clean out them uh, rustlers and them thieving homesteaders and secure the right of private property owners under law. Yes, sir. That's what the major said. <laughs> Straight from here to Creek Valley, huh? Yeah. Hey, uh, you two with that bread? Yeah. Thanks. I could say anything about where are we going to start cleaning out crossroads? Uh, some two-bit cattleman. Raker or something like that. Riker? Yeah, I guess so. Raker, Riker. What's the difference? You throw a rope around her neck all like, ain't it? <laughs> oh. You take the first watch, Shane. Could sleep good after Penno Beans. Just, uh, just checking the horses. Yeah, sure you were. Major told me to keep an eye on you, especially after we missed O'Reilly. Now you hand me that rifle, butt first. Nice and easy, like. Tramped up some. I've been riding all night. Hackett's coming to the valley. Where's Tom? He went into Grafton's. Look, I want you to take the wagon. I want you to get every homesteader in the valley. I tell them to go to Grafton's and bring their guns. Make it noon. That'll give time for everybody at the foothills. Now, Joy, you're going to have to run. Shane, 
They told us you were with the killers. They wouldn't believe us. He's right. Harvey Ball came here and, and said that a man called O'Reilly told him that you were with them. All right. Don't tell anybody I'm here. You just tell them to be at Grafton's by noon and tell them Grandpa sent you. Now, do you understand that? Grandpa sent you. Okay, go on. Shane, why didn't you send word? I couldn't, not till now. It wasn't anything I said that made you run off, was it? No, it wasn't anything like that. I'm glad you're back. And I'm sorry, both at the same time. Yeah. Shane, I... Marion. Maybe someday I'll be able to tell you how I feel. But it's going to take time, do you understand? I can try. We can both try. chance to talk will you go on shane they got wagons and new rifles and dynamite and they got a gatling gun what'd you bring Riker here for because they're gonna burn him out first good give him a swally of his own medicine see how he likes it all right but they won't stop there by the time they leave this valley there'll be nothing left here but empty range for the cattlemen's league that don't make sense boy right. now Riker's a cattleman right, right. they ain't about to burn out their own well, they sure burned me out, and I've been a stockman since right before the war. And they would have hung me, too, if this fella here hadn't given me the chance to get out of it. What do you want us to do, Shane? I want you to take every man that can handle a gun to the far side of Riker's place and fight him off. You want us to fight to keep Roof Riker? What? He's been trying to burn us out. Keep our folks off this land for as long as they've been here. Oh, let me tell you something, boy. I wouldn't jump across a creek to keep Roof Riker's place from getting burned out with him in it. And I'm saying it right to his face. Never mind, Shane. I know it was a dumb fool idea to come here in the first place. You listen to me, you mud wading chicken farmers. I never asked for your help. That was Shane's idea. And you're right, Sodbuster. I came to this valley a long time before y'all came a-crawling with your lawyers, land claims and fences, and ripping up good grazing range with those plaza yours. I fought you then. I'm gonna go on fighting you. You hear that, Shane? He admits it. I don't need you bunch of pin-fed steers. Hackett comes for me, he's gonna be met with a lot of lead. I come to this valley to stay. I'm gonna be buried here. You gotta admit, Harvey makes a lot of sense. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have sense enough to suck alum and drool. 
Sure, I was against Shane to begin with, but I was wrong. Sure, Riker's been fighting us, and he's going to keep fighting us until he can drive us out of this valley. But he's just one man. We can fight him even with this hacket. Now, that's different. It's an army coming in, and you can't go to the law or the militia because they got them in their pockets. And you stick together, and you just might make it. But you let them wipe out Riker, and they'll walk right through you. I say Shane's right. I say we've got to stop them before they get into this valley. I say we put it to a vote. place, Major, but ain't nobody home. Excellent. I seen Riker ride off with a couple of hands about 20 minutes ago. Had a small herd of cattle. Then we'll take possession and wait for Mr. Riker's return. Get him! Get him! photographic equipment. Place it all in the barn and be careful with it. Homesteaders. A bunch of stupid homesteaders. Well, you men think you've been through a battle, huh? Well, you haven't. That was just a skirmish compared to what's coming. Well, you got us in, Major. You get us out. Oh. You men want to surrender to the uh, tender mercies of those rustlers out there? This is war. They will take no prisoners. Do you understand that? Now, let's see about that gun. Order! 
ordering you to take possession of that gun. Immediately! still outside. Button your shirt. And you. Volunteer. You. There's a trough in there for watering stock, holds a hundred gallons. I wouldn't drink it, but it's water. What are we gonna do, go in after them? There's a lot of men that way. They're all good shots, and they got 100 yards of clear land outside that barn. I still say we ought to send somebody for the law. What law? They got the territorial authorities in their pocket. They'd stall us for days. When it comes night, we're gonna have trouble. It'll be dark of the moon. They're gonna be coming out. Somebody's coming out. Miserable coward. You killed him. Why? Better than a lingering death, Mr. Pettiburn. Well, gentlemen, it was a worthwhile effort. You acquitted yourselves well. However, there are a field of fires more than we can match at present. Well, then how are we supposed to get out of here? How do we even things up? The eternal alive, the outnumbered. Darkness. What time do you figure it is? Uh, four o'clock. Two hours of daylight left. Let's take them head on. Well, I'll go for that if your men go in the first wave. We've got to get that gun. Yeah, but not that way. Then how? I don't know. I say we move right well, in I on... I do it. know that we'll lose three quarters of our men if we listen to you. Indians have a lot of luck with fire arrows. That's my barn you're talking about. Oh, yeah. For a minute there, I forgot about that. No. I got a better idea. Tom, you and Riker get back with the men. Cover me. We haven't got any time to waste. You got time to explain? Riker... I may get killed, but your barn will survive. I promise you that. Shane, what are you going to do? You shove that gun of theirs right down their throats. You know how to fire it? Good luck. The strange thing, the really fantastic thing, 
is that these are the times you'll all remember. <laughs> that is, if we ever get out of here. Oh, we shall get out, Mr. Pettibone, rest assured. We could surrender. There will be no surrender. No. We shall not be humiliated by a pack of farmers. People know better than savages. I can promise you their treatment of any prisoners. They stopped firing. Guns trained on the corner of that building. We've got to kill him as soon as he comes into view. There won't be much time.
Don't shoot! We give up! That's Hackett. I guess he never will get his 10,000 to the sea. I'm beholden to you, Shane. I might have been burned out or maybe even killed. But don't change nothing. I know. I got a fight for my own. I know, Riker. And you'll lose just like him. Maybe. They're gonna think twice before they send another army into my valley. The Valley.